Yo, what's up and welcome back. Today's puzzle, we're looking at another creation by ID Venture. They've made a ton of escape room style puzzle boxes in the past and we've reviewed a bunch of them, but now this one in particular is their most complex, complete and unique puzzle to date. This is Sherlock's camera available now on Kickstarter. If you guys wanna go check it out, I left the link below, but before you do that, like this video, subscribe, and let's get into solving Sherlock Holmes' camera. The Sherlock's home camera, probably the most intricate of all the ID Venture puzzles I've ever come across. This one currently, like I said, on Kickstarter. It's got so many moving elements, and I love the integration of the plastic mixed with the wood. It just makes it seem a little bit more solid. Um, yeah, we got so much to look at here. I don't even know where to start. So let's just begin. Um, let's take a look at every side and inspect. So we got like some type of zoetrope here, which is like the early origins of film. Uh, on this side here, we got the lens obviously, and this can be turned, I guess, to focus. There's an arrow as well right there. Over here, we've got this knob and it says start. So I guess that's where we'll begin. And there's a bunch of beads here. And then on the top, you can align, I don't even know. There's so many things to look at. There's all this. We've got these swinging pendulums over here. Little symbols everywhere, arrows on these tabs. Over here as well, we've got this, which seems to rotate depending on where, oh, cool. So depending on which corner I go to, it can rotate those symbols. I guess we gotta match up the people to those symbols and something I've seen right, where was it? Right here, see we've got these little symbols here. So I guess that'll all come into play. Um, and on the bottom, we've got this as well, which is currently locked. So much to look at. So let's start here. This is where it says start, okay? And it says go this way. All right, so we're going this way. Oh, and this, this has to be unlocked, I see. Oh, so check out the beads that are under there. I gotta make room for those to drop down. That's my guess here. So right there, that should. I gotta get one more over there and then that should be able to drop down. Can I spin that? Oh, that did work. The spin move. So I spun it and uh, the centrifugal force actually propelled the beads to the ends, allowing this to drop down. What a cool mechanism. So now this, now that that's done, how does this open? Ha. Here we go. That is now extracted. Okay. Oh, I had to line up the times. I see, how cool. So it would have been, it would have been right about there, something like that. Okay, now that that's unlocked, we've got an eye here and an arrow pointing in there. So I'm guessing, uh, I don't know if this is the way I have to go right now. There's so many things to look at. Hmm. Okay. So now that that's done, what does that unlock? Now this made that go this way. Oh, this little arrow here. This little arrow can be completed with, uh, with that. So I guess that's what we have to do. I'm not sure. 
This can freely rotate. This can go side to side as well. What's stopping that? I have this, which is a magnet. Not sure what to do with it yet, but there are little magnets on the inside here. Lots of things going on. Really hard to, really hard to try and figure out what, what the next move is here. Because there's so many things that are just being presented to me. Oh wait. What is this? This says this has to be pushed in. There's an arrow here. Oh! There was an arrow and it had like uh, flames on the end. So I expected, all right, maybe I gotta push it strong. And I guess it unhinged the magnet, which then shot this out, which is very cool. Very cool mechanism. All right, but that being said, now this has to be pushed in. Not sure. Not sure why or where. Okay. So that's good. We got a few things out of here. Uh, does this need to be used anywhere? Sometimes these tools can be reused. We got an on off button here, which I guess we'll eventually have to turn on. All right. Under here as well, there seems to be a cog symbol right down there. Not sure what that's attached to quite yet. And this as well has got to move out of the way somehow. It's being blocked by this. What's this being blocked by? This says to push in. Ah, uh, so this has to go through, ah, uh, I see. So as soon as I pull this back, then this is free to push through here allowing the space to open. I'm not sure what else that's going to accomplish, but I think whatever this is here is blocking that. So maybe we just move forward, try to find a different uh, approach. So I noticed they have different ties, different mustaches and different headpieces. And here we have an option of different ties, different mustaches and headpieces. So maybe we're trying to find uh, the culprit here. I think that might be what we're trying to do, which is pretty cool. Can this be used at any point? And if it can be used, it'll, it'll probably show me a similar symbol. So I have a camera symbol here. Where did I see that before? Down here, ah. Check that out. Always got to be attentive to all the symbols. Oh, it wants to move. So this does go in there. Um, there is something blocking it, however. I guess it might be this. Or I have to turn it on first. But yeah, this definitely is going to be the tool. As you can see, it's already moving that zoetrope up there. So this is going to be the tool to end up moving that. You match the camera up to the camera. Now this, is this still relevant? There's all these extra symbols as well. All these symbols, which lead to these ones here. So depending on the crime and the person who committed the crime, it's gonna give us some type of combination that'll let us open that section. And this is a some type of time that we have to adjust. Maybe we can even uh, we can even use this to adjust it. Okay, maybe this is the time that we have to look for here, wherever that arrow is. There's different types of arrows though. So I'm not sure where to go next. I think this and this, but why does it say to look through there? There is a small opening and is that what the eye symbol is for so that I look through that small opening? This feels like the final compartment. Okay, let's try this. Hat. Oh, I can't move this one. Oh. Aha. I 
push this down and there's a tiny symbol that appears right there. And is this where this goes in? Ooh, I don't want to lose that in there. But this, no. Okay, so we got a symbol. Now that I push this down, does that free anything up? Okay, so what is that symbol? This is, and that by the way, is coming from here. There's like a small dotted line that is coming from the mustache and it's going to there, which is showing us a symbol here. And then it's also opening this gap. And I feel like that's important that that gap's opened. But I also don't want to just randomly lose a piece in there, you know? Okay, so if that's the symbol, where else are we seeing the symbol? Let's have a look at that. Not here, no. Wait, is this the symbol? Oh man, there's so many things to look at. I'm getting distracted by like each and every tiny uh, component of this puzzle. Just wish I knew where to go next, because this here gives me gives me a symbol and I just I haven't found that symbol yet. Oh, it's here. Wait a second, so does that mean? I don't understand what those two symbols have to do with one another. The only thing I can guess is that this maybe comes out and then I use that very same symbol to push it in that hole because otherwise I don't think they're connected. Am I looking for a specific time here? There's this arrow. Can we find this arrow here? Ah, there it is. It's that one. What does that mean? The arrow is pointing there now. Does that give us a time? Two? That's clearly the same arrow. I don't know if that's a coincidence, but this arrow is now the same as this one. Does this give us something? Is that 12 o'clock? Or is that six o'clock or three o'clock? Wait, if that's two o'clock, it's hard to tell. Because here, the back of the arrow has these beads and so does this arrow here. So that might be the long hand or that is the short hand. All right, this definitely has to point some way that this can be released and this is the clue. I just don't understand how to translate this clue onto this here. That's what I'm failing to see. Aha, so it is connected. That is out. Is it all the way out? It is not all the way out, so. I haven't found the correct time. There we go. All right, now that that's pulled back, oh, there's a magnet on there. Oh, and now it reveals an eye. Because this was pulled out like this. This is, and now it's in. Now there's an eye, so I guess I gotta go towards the eye. And there's a mirror on the inside. Have a look at that. There's a picture of a diamond right there. <laughs> it's like two mirrors reflecting this, uh, this image of a diamond right there. So we have a diamond. That is good. Okay. So I guess we go to the diamond which uh, the only diamond I see are the ones that are here on these little symbols. Okay, this side seems to be complete. We have a diamond. What to do with that information now that we have a diamond? We still have this to work with here. Is there a suspect that we can pin the diamond on, on those little images? Maybe that's the next move here. Since we have a diamond, what does that mean? Oh, I can move this. And it moves the mirror. Ah, so if I move it to here, 
that's when I see the diamond. So this is a clue. Is there also a mirror over here? Okay, well we know that whoever's wearing, wearing that has the diamond. So it could be, it's definitely this person. So we shall put the diamond there. Diamond on this person, because he has that scarf. Now I guess we have to find out who the other people are and what they've done. So that is part one solved. I guess we move on to the next one, which I'm not entirely sure. So this has to be some type of clue as well. All these little beads on these lines here. I'm not exactly sure what that represents, but I'm sure I have to circle them with these little circles here. And that'll give me, you know, once I find the correct combination, that'll allow maybe this to come out further. Ah, that relates to this quite obviously. Okay. These shapes here look a lot like the shapes that are here. When did this fall out? What is this? Was this here the whole time? Hold on a second. This has the same symbol as this here. Where was this? This was here? Oh, this just fell out like this. It was just in there. Oh, okay. So now, good, 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 good. So now I go here. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. Beard. Where's that pointing to? It's pointing to here. Pull this down. Where was it? Was it here or was it here? Because I can change this now. What does that do though? Okay, we got beard or mustache. Mustache guy's here. Beard guy's here. Also mustache guy. Oh, mustache and Necktie guy. If I line all these up, they actually line up to these money symbols and this ring Ah, oh, the ring with the diamond. The money with the cash. The gun with the gun. And the medicine with the blood. Okay, what does that do now that I have all that information? Oh. Aha. So this definitely wants to come out um, because I've aligned them all properly. See all those little symbols. This matches the money symbol. The diamond matches the diamond ring. The, oh no, this one has to be the target. So what is that? What is the target then? Which symbol is a target? It's gonna either be the gun or the bomb. Oh, it's the gun. And over here is the bomb, but there's a bomb over here. We set that to bomb. There we go. Now. I think if I line them all up just like this. That'll be able to come out. Yes. Cool. Okay. Wild. On the inside here, we have a little, what looks like a spinning cog symbol. And that spinning cog symbol looks like it might be connected to that on the inside there, as you can see right there. But I can't turn it. Something's blocking it. 
There is a peg blocking it. There we go. Oh, there we go. So now, now I have to rotate this because I can push this in right here. And then once that's pushed in, I can lock it into place like that. And now it says on. Ah, it says on, which means, yes, we can turn the camera on. Now, if we can turn the camera on, does that mean, oh, cool. How cool is that? That doesn't come out further than that. Oh, is this the tool we needed? Hold on. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Aha, that looks a lot like the tool here. So it goes in like that. Oh, got it. There's a little lever on the inside here. Woohoo. Okay. Okay, this is all part of the Zoe trope. Whoa, and there's like. I got to put them in the right configuration. Take them all out here for a sec. Okay, so it looks like if you look at the drawing there, it looks like every symbol is like attached to another one, right? Like every person. So I just have to find the right arrangement. Stand arms wide. Okay, so part of their body parts. Oh, okay, it shows you like, see here, there's like two feet. So maybe the only one that touches with two feet on the ground. Well, I guess the ground is this way, right? Looks like the first one here. He looks like he's touching with two feet and he's jumping in the air with two feet. The next guy is touching with two hands and his head. Okay, so let's look at, we had two feet and then two hands and his head. Okay, it's these two here. So it's going this way, two feet, Let's see which one that was. He's kind of like, he's this guy. So this guy goes where the two feet are, is my guess. Bam. Okay. Next up is the guy with two hands and his head. And when he's in the air, he looks like this guy. Right, because he's upside down. Next guy touches two hands to the ground. That's the guy at the very end. In the air, he's kind of doing, he's kind of doing this here. Is it this? It is this, okay. So this guy's the guy with the two hands. 
which is there. He's touching the ground there. Okay. Um, only one hand and head. One hand and head touching the ground. That's the middle guy there, as you can see. Okay, and in the air, he is this guy. Hey, if this is a solution, this is pretty cool. Just make sure here. Yeah. So that guy is this guy. All right. What's that? A hand and, and a what? Okay, we got one foot. Let's just do the guy with the one foot since that's pretty clear. It looks like the third guy here. And in the air, it's this guy. So, this goes oops, this way. And then this one, obviously, would be the last one, which would be here. Oh, and now this moves freely. Oh, there we go. Just wasn't lodged in properly. Oh, cool. Okay. Now this comes out. What do we have here? Looks like fingerprints analysis. Okay. Hold on. How can this just come out? What is this? Oh, <gasps> that's so cool. It's fingerprints. And I have to look for the correct one, I'm guessing? Oh man, that's so cool. Is that the, uh, it can't be the end of the puzzle. I guess I have to look for the fingerprint here. Ah, and then maybe it gives me a clue. I'm gonna bring this in here. Maybe this will help out a little bit. One, two, three, four. It does help out actually a lot. Okay, so maybe we're looking, maybe this is a combination lock because there are four layers here and there are a bunch of these symbols. So maybe I gotta look for these symbols here. So in the first one, in the middle, you see a kind of like circle type, type thingy, it's very tiny. The second one's kind of like a V, but like, oh, maybe it's like the waves here. So maybe we go to the waves. The third one is kind of, I feel like it's kind of like this one. And then the fourth one is this one, right? No? Oh, let's go. Best detective, and it's reflecting my own face. <laughs> Very cool. Dude, this was so cool. Little hard to see. Uh, probably could use a magnifying glass, but what a cool little idea to incorporate a negative into there. Man. All right. Um, my final thoughts on this puzzle coming up. All right. Hot dang. Here we go. This was pretty cool. Um, as far as ID Ventures puzzles go, this one definitely takes the cake. I would say definitely worth purchasing if you were looking into getting it. A couple of unique mechanisms and features that this puzzle box have has that I haven't seen before. One obviously being the zoetrope, uh, which is very cool. And this here as well, which is acting as 
the sort of Zoe trope with these little figures here. I thought that puzzle was really, really unique. The first puzzle was, was great, which is a spinning. I didn't so much understand the clock puzzle and kind of forced my way through it. But past that, uh, I did find it very entertaining to, you know, decipher this code with the different people and, and, and what they had to do with the crimes and whatnot. This last one, this last one I thought was the most interesting concept. However, uh, it was a little hard to read the fingerprints and some of these parts are sort of damaged and it's really hard to sort of see. Uh, if they supplied us with a magnifying glass of some type, I think that would be greatly appreciated, albeit a magnifying glass made of wood and a little bit of glass that is compartmentalized in, in this box as an extra feature, I thought would have been really cool. That being said though, I, I think, you know, as far as original, that being said, as far as originality goes, this is like a nine out of 10. And as far as solving goes, I give it like an eight and difficulty, maybe, maybe also seven and a half, eight out of 10. All in all, probably took me about an hour and a half to two hours to complete. Pretty cool puzzle. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below and we'll see you on the next video.